We're downing the big gulp. A supersized jolt of um, 400 parts per million of CO2 is carbonating the atmosphere and fizzing us toward climate chaos. In the face of climate policy, policy inertiatives that fail to meet the magnitude and urgency of the crisis, the climate movement is agonizing over the riddle of what it's going to take to activate the world before it's irretrievably late. Will it be the overwhelming accumulation of unnatural disasters that finally bring us to our knees? Might it be new improved framing, a transformational tale of woe become opportunity that feverishly grips our story-based psyche? Or perhaps high-powered economic competition from China to seize the renewable high ground and leave the US economy in the dust? Or surely, the lure of big profits for big business in the race to build the low-carbon economy? Well, new scientific research is emerging that could reveal the tipping point. It just got way too personal. Yes, early data suggest that global warming makes us fat. <laughs> I kid you not. <laughs> if anything could tip the scales, this could be it. <laughs> now, admittedly, the research is early and thin, but here's how it goes. <laughs> here's how it goes. Danish researchers were mapping the lifestyles of thousands of Danes in a study called Monica, related to cardiovascular health and obesity. Lars George Herzog stumbled on a weird anomaly. Over a 22-year period, both thin and fat people put on weight, and the increase was proportionally the same. Herzog surmised that excess CO2 in the atmosphere might be affecting hormones in the brain known as orexin neurons. Orexins stimulate eating, wakefulness, and energy expenditure. CO2 appears to make our blood more acidic, um, and which influences our brain to want to eat more. Further research set out to test Herzog's hypothesis. A 2010 study was published in the Proceedings of the Royal Society B, which is Britain's flagship biological research journal dedicated to high-quality research papers. It found that 24 populations of eight species had gained weight in the last 50 years. That included lab animals in controlled settings where they're eating the same diet over time. The probability of that happening, said Herzog, is one in 10 million. In 2011, Danish researchers at the University of Copenhagen tested the theory on human beings. Under controlled conditions, men with the greater amount of CO2 in their blood ate 6% more food than men in climate rooms with less CO2. And larger studies are now underway. The hypothesis was published in the scientific journal Nutrition and Diabetes in 2012. As the researcher Arnie Astrup commented, this could give us an explanation for why the entire population on this planet is increasing in body weight as soon as there's available food. This being America, the fat is in the climate fire. We could see a nightmare coalition arise, heavy hitters from Weight Watchers, Al Gore, and the Weather Channel, to Oprah, Michael Bloomberg, and the air conditioning industry. <laughs> For the diet and publishing empire, it opens up a new bonanza of the low-carbon diet, giving whole new meaning to low carbs. <laughs> but we know America's biggest loser needs to be the bloated fossil fuel financial industrial complex. The Koch, the Koch brothers, ExxonMobil, Halliburton, and the rest of the oligarchy's fat cats have been throwing their weight around far too long, and the atmosphere is getting nasty. It's high time to put them on a low-carbon crash diet and trim down to 350 parts per million, that is. True, the, the science isn't definitive yet, but by the time it is, it'll be too late. We don't have another decade to chew the fat. This is a case for the precautionary principle. An ounce of prevention is worth pounds of cure. <laughs> After all, Dick Cheney advocated his 1% doctrine. If there were a 1% chance of a low probability, high impact event like terrorism using WMDs, we have to treat it as a certainty in terms of our response. The weight of history is upon us. We have nothing to lose but our waistlines. 
Thank you.